Joshua 1, verses 7 through 9. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate it on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to him, and he will make your path straight. This is the word of the Lord. Would you pray with me? God, our Father, we thank you again for your word. We give thanks to God for the truth that it speaks into our lives, not only as individuals, but as the body of Christ. Help us, we pray by your spirit, to hear you speak anew to our hearts in and through. And I pray, O oh God, that you hide me truly behind the cross of your son, Jesus. In everything that is said and done, you might be glorified and that you would be seen. I want to start this morning by showing you a brief video clip that's going to kind of set the mood and the tone for what we're going to look at um, this morning. So let's take a moment and watch this. Thank you. 
we always enter into New Year's with all kinds of mixed feelings and emotions. And as you think about the year 2016, the new year that's before you, and even as we collectively think about that, the new year that's before us, we need to ask, are we hopeful as we think about the new year? Are we hopeful? Or maybe for some of us, we dread the thought of a new year before us. It's another year to go through. Maybe we're excited about the new year. Maybe we see all kinds of new horizons out there. We see a new day before us dawning. We're not sure where it's going to go, and we're not sure how it's going to unfold, but it's exciting. And we can't wait to get going. Or maybe on the other side, we might be a little fearful. We're excited about the new day, but we don't know what it holds, so there's a little bit of fear there as to what will it mean to step into that new year? What will it mean to step into a new day that God is calling us into, especially since we are not real sure where that new day might take us? Now again, we face these new days with all kinds of mixed emotions. As you saw in the video clip, it said, what in your mind, in your estimation, would it take to make this new year successful for you? Would it be making more money? We'd all like to make more money. Would it be getting out of debt? Who wouldn't want to be out of debt? Would it be getting a new job? Uh, maybe. Maybe not. A new car? A new house? Finding a soulmate? Maybe just making it through another year. That would be success. I've made it through yet one more year. The question in the video clip was, do you want to know how to really succeed this year? Not just make it through, but do you want to know how to really succeed this year? And so one of the things, friends, we've got to determine is how do we define success? How do we define success? Is success measured in the things that I just mentioned that we saw in the video clip? Is it measured in the things that we have? Is it measured in the things that we anticipate acquiring in the new year? Or is it measured in how we feel at any one given time? In this moment I feel successful, in this one I don't, in this one I do. It's measured in the circumstances that we find ourselves in. But what is success measured in how closely we walk in relationship with the Lord our God? Is that how we measure success? Unfortunately, I'm not sure that it always is. But what if we started measuring it in that way? If you recall in the video clip, it suggested, it proclaimed that we need to just let go. Now, that's easy to say. It's another thing for us to do. But that's what God wants you to do. That's what God wants me to do. That's what God wants us to do collectively. To come to that place where we just let go instead of so desperately trying to hang on to what it is that we have. To the things that we think determine success in our lives. Because you see, too often, if we're not careful, we can hold on so tightly to the things that we think determine success in our lives, that we miss what God really wants for us that would truly be success, not only in our eyes, but especially in His. And oftentimes, the things that we're trying to hold on to that we deem as success become for us the very things that are holding us back. It proclaimed in the video clip that God wants us to let this year be His year. 
So what might that look like? What might it look like if we were going to make this year his year? Let me suggest some very real possibilities. We would start enjoying God, really enjoying God, and really allowing ourselves to be in His presence. Our challenge to read and pray through the Bible this coming year becomes, I think, one of the primary ways that we can bring ourselves into God's presence. Reading the Bible is far more than just reading words in a book. And if that's how we're reading it, then we're going to miss the point. And more importantly, we're going to miss God in the midst of it. And I don't know about you, but I have to confess there's been times when I've been either in a study or I've been doing some devotional kinds of things and it's like I want to keep up with this so I'm just going to get this reading done so I can check it off my to-do list and then move on. And then later come to realize I really didn't hear God speaking because I never gave God the time. I never allowed myself to come into His presence through that word or through that prayer time. I never invited Him into the midst of that moment. It was an assignment. But reading through and praying through God's Word this year, I believe is an invitation from God to come into His presence in a very real way. Worship is another way that we bring ourselves into God's presence, whether it's in corporate worship, whether it's in personal worship that we do on a daily basis, a weekly basis, whatever that might be. But it's a way that we bring ourselves into God's presence and encountering the living God. Fellowship, shared groups, service, devotions, the list could go on and on are all ways that we bring ourselves into God's presence as we invite Him into those moments. Another is we would listen to His voice, and these all go hand in hand. Listening to God's voice in a, an intentional way of really wanting to hear from God. But the question becomes, how intentional are we to really listening to what God has to say? Again, too often, and we've talked about that before in our prayer life, if we're not careful, we can always be talking to God or talking at God. But how often do we just sit and listen and say, Lord, Speak. Your servant is listening. Again, that's easy to say. It's another thing for us to do. Not too long ago, I was reading in a devotion about Abraham and how he listened to God. God who was calling him to leave his home. To go into a new day. An uncertain day. And Abraham followed him even though he wasn't sure where God was leading him. And he did it because he heard God's voice. And not only heard God's voice, he listened. <coughs> he listened. Are there times when perhaps we hear God's voice but we choose to ignore it because we're really not sure? We want to know what he has to say, or maybe we're afraid of what he's going to say, or where he's going to take us. Maybe he's calling us to do something that we really don't want to do. And so, kind of like a small child, yeah, mom, dad, I really didn't hear what you said. When they know full well exactly what you said. And just like our children can't fool us as parents, we can't fool God. He wants to say to us, you know exactly what I said. You're just choosing not to hear it. <clears throat> Jesus, time and again, his teachings would say to the people, you have ears to hear, but you do not listen. You're hearing but you're not listening. You're ignoring what God has to say to you. 
And oftentimes, because we ignore what God has to say to us, we miss, again, those times with Him, to be with Him in His presence. We miss the opportunities that He puts before us that maybe are scaring us to death, but if we listened and followed, we'd find blessing if we would just trust. Jeremiah, in the 25th chapter, speaks to the people of Judah concerning speaking the word of the Lord to them and their response to it, and not only to that word, but to God Himself. So Jeremiah the prophet said to all the people of Judah and to all those living in Jerusalem, for 23 years the word of the Lord has come to me, and I have spoken to you again and again, but you have not listened. And he tells them that even though there have been many who have spoken God's word to them, have spoken what God wanted them to hear, they refuse to listen. In fact, we read there in Jeremiah, God saying these words, but you did not listen to me. Jesus says in the Gospel of John, in the 10th chapter, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me. My sheep do what? They listen to my voice. 